film photography on the rise and rising film prices, everyone is wondering how I can get my money's worth out of shooting film in 2020. Well, this is Sam from 2000 Studios, and today I'm gonna to be showing you the process on developing your own black and white at home. And the first thing that you're gonna need is a Patterson tank. This is the groundwork to all of your developing this is basically where you're gonna spool all your film, this is where you're gonna pour all your chemicals, this is where you're gonna agitate your film. This is what essentially makes up developing at home. The second thing that you're gonna need is a bunch of measuring cylinders. I use four, one for my developer, one for my stop bath, one for my fixer, and one for mixing any of my chemicals. This is basically to allow you to get your exact amount of chemicals needed to develop. Now the third thing that you're gonna need is a fully dark room or you can get a dark bag. I use a dark bag just because it basically just allows you to spool on your film anywhere. Now film is light sensitive obviously, so you need a fully dark area that does not even have a crack of light. Now the fourth thing that you might need is a thermometer. Now thermometers are more necessary on color film as color film is a lot less forgiving compared to black and white. However, having a thermometer is a good idea to get consistent results and I use one whenever my rolls of film actually matter a lot, like say I'm shooting for a client. Now the fifth thing that you're gonna need is a pair of scissors. Now the pair of scissors is basically going to live in the dark bag or wherever you're going to spool the film. Now the final thing that you're gonna need are your chemicals. First thing that you're going to need is your developer. Now, the developer is basically what's going to react with the film and kickstart the developing. It's what's going to get your images out of the actual celluloid. Now, the second thing is your stop bath. Now, stop bath is kind of optional. Now, you're basically going to need something to stop the development anyways. However, whether you want to use water or the Kodak stop bath is totally your choice. Um, it's just going to change the amount of time that you actually have to stop your developer. If you do not use a stop bath, your images are just going to fade into nothing. So I'd get one. Now the third thing that you're gonna wanna get is a fixer. Now that fixer, what it's going to do is it's actually going to take that developed and stopped image on the film strip and make it no longer sensitive to light. Now the fourth chemical that you're going to need, which you can also substitute for dish soap and water, is photo flow. What PhotoFlow basically does is it washes your film. It's basically like a shampoo and body wash for your film. It's going to make sure that you do not have any water lines, water streaks on your film. Now the first step to actually developing it is you're gonna to wanna to get your Patterson tank, the film, and a pair of scissors into the dark bag. Now I'd strategically arrange all this, that way you can kind of know where things are and get things into the tank as fast as possible. Now the second step to actually doing this, and once you've kind of spooled on your film onto the reel, is you're gonna wanna do a pre-wash. Now what the pre-wash actually does is that allows you to get your film to the same temperature as the developer, which may get you more consistent results in theory. It also allows you to get rid of any film streaking that you might get with the Patterson tank and the reels. Now this is completely optional, a lot of film photographers don't develop using a pre-wash. However, I choose to because I've gotten the best results with it. Now the second step is that you're going to want to pour your developer into the developing tank and start your timer. And as soon as you get your developer into the tank, you're going to want to start agitating for one full minute. What I usually do is I agitate for the first minute continuously and then I kind of let it sit for a minute and basically every minute for the rest of that, I basically agitate three times. A lot of different photographers also use different agitating routines, but you know what, it's pretty simple. All you're doing is just pouring your chemicals in, agitating, and just waiting for the film to kind of do its thing in its tank. Now the thing is that you're going to want to just kind of pour your chemicals into a chemical safe bottle. In Canada, it is fully illegal to pour your chemicals into the sink and that you need to dispose of them safely at a chemical plant. Now, this is where you're gonna actually wanna get a funnel for this and funnels are relatively cheap and just lets you pour your chemicals and dispose of them safely. 
And the next step after you've disposed of your developer safely is you're gonna to wanna to stop the development. This is what your stop bath is for, and basically you're gonna to wanna to pour it in and agitate for one minute continuously. Now, after your stop bath is done, you're gonna to wanna to pour it out safely, and you're gonna to wanna to fix your film. Now, this is going to usually take minutes, no matter what film. Uh, that's at least my experience. I would just double check that. However, once you pour your fixer, you're gonna to wanna to agitate for the first minute, and like the developer, every minute, you're gonna to wanna to agitate three times. Now, right after you're done fixing it, you're gonna to wanna to basically put your fixer into another bottle and just kind of keep it for later. Fixers, unlike developers, you can reuse to an extent. Fixer, you can use approximately 25 times and then it's fully exhausted. However, I've been using my fixer for a few months now and it is fully fine. I would just get a fixer tester and see if your fixer is exhausted. Now, after you're done fixing it, you're gonna wanna do a after wash, what I usually do in this step is I fill the tank up with water, shake it around, and then dispose of the water and repeat. So rinse, repeat the film for two minutes. And after this, I let water kind of seep in there for five minutes while it's flowing out. And this is basically just a rinse. This is gonna make sure that no chemicals are left on that film and you will have a clean slate. And then once you're done the rinse, you can basically put one drop of PhotoFlow no less, no more, and basically kind of just shake it around, uh, make sure that it's washed, and then hang it on your clothespins. And I mean, it is optional to have a squeege. I usually just kind of dip my fingers in photo flow and then I wring it down the entire roll. Some people kind of cringe at that. I mean, I don't because it's fully fine. So you do not need a squeege. Actually, sometimes squeegees do scratch your film. So it's fully optional and in the end, with developing and film developing at home, there are so many different things that you can do and just because I do it one way does not mean that you can do it the exact same way. I think film developing lets you be extremely creative with your images and it allows you to actually be one with your photos. So I completely recommend film developing and it definitely saves you money in the long run. So this has been Sam from 2000 Studios on film developing at home. Hope you have a great day. Please leave a like down below, comment down below, subscribe to the channel if you're new, follow us on Instagram, and be sure to watch the next video. So, that's it.